then we're going to have a look at how we uh, operate with problem sizes in Alpaca. When you start to develop a parallel program, you typically ask yourself two questions as a programmer. First, how large is my problem I want to uh, process? So basically this boils down to how many data elements need processing and also which capabilities are offered by my hardware, which means how many cores do I have available? The challenge here is that the problem size and the number of cores are completely disjoint. There's absolutely no relation between the, your number of cores and your problem size. So now you have to ask yourself how you distribute your problem size among the number of cores you have available. The two important factors here are first the problem size, obviously, the number of data elements, and also your hardware capabilities, mostly your number of cores. If you don't know how exactly you want to distribute your data just yet, it's a good rule of thumb, meaning that you launch one thread per data element. This is not always the ideal choice. It depends on your algorithm and your problem and your workload. But uh, if you start with it, this is also a good chance for optimization later. Usually you uh, launch more threads than cores because of oversubscription. Over and uh, I've copied the lines here from the right from the our Hello World example. And the number of threads in our system is determined by two values. First, the blocks per grid and also the threads per block. In Alpaca, the overall number of threads is then the uh, product of blocks per grid times threads per block. We will cover this in more detail later, but this formula is good to know right now. So uh, the overall number of threads, blocks per grid times threads per block. However, there's, uh, you also have to be aware of launching too many threads. You shouldn't run too many at once, Oh, uh, I can't give you an exact number here because an exact definition of too many really depends on your concrete hardware. But you have to know that some hardware resources are always shared between threads. This also means that having too many threads accessing shared resources results in bottlenecks. This can seriously impact your program's performance. So you always have to uh, ideally profile your program and see if you created any bottlenecks unwillingly. But this is also a good chance for optimization. For example, if you uh, try to access the I.O. buffer in parallel, as we do in our Hello World example with uh, printf, you need to serialize the access to the output buffer because if you wouldn't, all threads would actually write to the buffer in parallel and all you would get out is some sort of gibberish. So you need to uh, make, ensure that the threads are actually uh, writing to the output buffer in a serialized fashion. However, if you introduce more threads now, you can try this at home and maybe launch a thousand threads or so on your CPU. You will see that there's more serialization required and that there's also worse performance per thread because uh, the individual thread has to wait much, much longer the more threads there are in the queue before him. Are there any questions with uh, this approach? Do you support backend which do not have device side printf? I think all the devices we support do have uh, device side printf. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, and just to add up a little bit, so yeah, so that's true. And also this uh, print, um, like, like generally what we try to do is that I, you use alpaca abstractions for everything and if a sound device doesn't have some functionality we just do not specialize uh, the respective template and that's why if you try to compile the kernel to choose some operation for some device that doesn't support it it will just the template will not be specialized and so uh, it will just not compile so so normally the idea is that if if it's compiled it should be working okay Any more questions? Yes, Graham. I was just desperately searching for his unmute button. Yeah, so um, the, the block, does that, I guess you go on to explain this a bit later, but for instance, on a GPU, would all the threads in a block execute on the same SM? 
Yes, uh, a GPU block is always scheduled to a single SM. Okay, thanks.